Hey friends, welcome back to week seven of Pantry Challenge. Josh and I just got back from Utah. We were in Utah for a Valentine's Day slash anniversary ski trip. And we are excited to be home and to be eating some home cooked meals again. We had some fantastic meals out. Today is February 14th, it's Monday, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. You might expect me to do some elaborate Valentine's Day dinner. <sighs> We are ready to just have some simple home cooked food. <laughs> Yesterday we flew in and we went straight to work back on this house. We are in the middle of painting our entire house and Josh and I had to finish the downstairs ceilings so that I could put my house back together. So we had a shepherd's pie for dinner last night. I threw it in the oven, it was frozen. I made that shepherd's pie in the last freezer video we did and it turned out perfect. It was the best thing to come home to just to throw it in the oven, have a home cooked meal, and that gave us the energy we needed to finish painting all the ceilings of our entire house. At that same time, I had a bunch of eggs that came in. My chickens are laying a ton of eggs. I got those collected and I made up a baked oatmeal for Josh as well. I'm completely out of thawed milk in our refrigerator. I have it in the freezer. I just don't have any out. So this week I'm gonna take some out. So I made that baked oatmeal with some powdered milk. I had made up some almond milk for my creamer because I'm out of half and half for my coffee. So I put that pulp that I dried in the oven, that almond pulp, in the baked oatmeal. I also put in some applesauce that I made from the apple trees that we have this year and I used the last of the raspberry jam that I bought for the Valentine's Day cookies. Tonight for dinner I'm still recovering from the three days of skiing and then getting home and painting so I needed something super super easy. We had some of these sweet potatoes that definitely needed to be eaten up so I went ahead and peeled them, chopped them up and I put them on a sheet pan and I put a little bit of avocado oil. I am now out officially out of olive oil, some Korean red pepper flakes, you know how much I love these things, and garlic powder. I also top them with some freeze dried onion top powder that you will see when they come out of the oven. We are gonna have a freezer meal tonight. It is gonna be one of the chicken marinades that I did a while ago. And I haven't put the salt on yet because I didn't want to do that earlier because that would start drawing out moisture. I've done that before where I have salted my root vegetables or my vegetables before and let them sit and they get all soggy. So if you're going to prep your veggies before you're ready to bake them, just don't salt them. I'm going to bake this in a 400 degree oven. This pan is way overcrowded. If you want to roast vegetables, do not overcrowd them like I am. I don't feel like doing that today. If they're a little bit soft, that's fine. I'm going to turn them into something else later this week because this is obviously way too much for Josh and I to eat in one day. So they're going in the oven. The next thing what I have here is what I call smashed chicken. It's just a really fancy lemon chicken. It's phenomenal. I made this for my sister for freezer meals because she just had a baby. This chicken is really good cooked on a grill, but Josh and I don't have a grill, so we're not gonna cook it on a grill. This stuff here is just a little olive oil that's still cold. I'm gonna cook this on a 400 degree oven. These are still a little frozen until they're just nice and cooked and browned. The next thing we're gonna be making today is some cauliflower rice. The only fresh vegetables that I have left in my house right now are carrots. I do have some carrots out in the garden that need to be harvested from last year and that's an experiment that we are going to harvest them this week together and we're gonna see how they did overwintering outside. I'm gonna cook two of these packs. These are from Costco and two packs is always perfect for Josh and I to have enough for dinner and leftovers. I always put them in one of my leftover containers. Normally I thaw them first. I'm gonna microwave them for about five minutes in this and that's my favorite way to cook cauliflower rice because it kind of dries it out. If you don't cook it long enough, then it gets watery and it waters down whatever you put on top of it. So I have the cauliflower rice in the microwave right now and that's dinner. I'll show you what it looks like coming all together. This came in the mail. I finally ordered myself my, I do need though to season the cauliflower rice. So I'm gonna put some of my homemade season salt on it. That is the only thing that, if you don't season rice cauliflower, then it can be kind of bland. So we'll make sure we season that when that's all done. I have not gone grocery shopping except for that Azure haul that you saw last month for doing the Valentine's Day cookies. And 
I am going to try to push through the rest of the month without going grocery shopping and continue to eat down my pantry stores until the end of February. I do have to do some baking though for my sister-in-law's baby shower. I'm going to be making some kebabs, some fruit kebabs, and some caprese salad kebabs, and some cupcakes. And I obviously don't have the fresh ingredients to make those things. And so I'm not considering, I'm not going to consider that breaking the pantry challenge because that is something I'm doing for her baby shower. And so I just want to let you know that we will be going grocery shopping this week to get some of those fresh items. And I'm going to show you how to make one of the absolute most incredible chocolate cakes you'll have ever eaten. I am going to make them into cupcakes, which I've never had them in cupcakes before. So we'll have to see how those turn out. Okay, so this cauliflower rice is um, not done. Let's see if you can see. Very hot. I don't think you can see it. But because this cauliflower rice was frozen, there's a little bit of water right about here. I do not want watery cauliflower. So what I do is I just cook it in the microwave until it completely evaporates all that water and it gets nice and dry and it's just a lot, lot better tasting. And so we probably have another four minutes on the microwave for that, but I think our chicken's done. So let me get a pot holder out. Look at these super cute pot holders. I love them. I just got these. They're little canning jars and let's get the chicken out. Oh yeah, it's done. I'm gonna take a fork and anywhere where it's kind of brown and stuck on my cookie sheet, I wanna make it easier for cleanup. So I'm gonna just use my chicken to deglaze the cookie sheet. That's really yummy brown flavor. And because it's still warm, it's gonna come up really easily. And so we're doing two things. We're kind of cleaning our cookie sheet and we're getting that nice yummy flavor into our sauce. So I'm gonna let this chicken cool a little bit. We'll cut it up and then we'll top it over our cauliflower rice. And I'll pour all of this cooked marinade on top of it as well. So we kind of just made our sauce at the same time we cooked our chicken. My sister just texted me and told me that my niece, who's not a huge fan of chicken, she's one and a half and I think it's a texture thing. She ate all of this chicken that my sister made for her tonight. So that is exciting. And here is the dinner, sweet potato fries, cauliflower rice, and chicken. So we'll just dish this up and eat dinner. This is way too many sweet potato fries for just leftovers with this meal and tonight. So I'll turn them into something. We'll see what we turn them into. Hey friends, it is now, what's today? Tuesday, and we are gonna make some dinner. I have a couple spaghetti squash here. We're gonna roast these spaghetti squash up. And then I have a freezer meal that I pulled out of the oven yesterday. It is some meatballs. So we're gonna have with red sauce. So we're gonna have spaghetti squash with meatballs and red sauce over top. These are homegrown spaghetti squash. They definitely need to be eaten up because they are showing some signs of wear. Most of my spaghetti squash looks absolutely fantastic. So what I did before I chose the spaghetti squash I was gonna to cook tonight is I looked for the ones that looked like they needed to be eaten first. And we're gonna cook two. I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna scrape the inside out and give this to the chickens. I'm glad that I had a freezer meal because my mom was just over here and we just spent the afternoon making some fire starters. If you're new around here, we heat our house with wood with a wood stove. My mom doesn't heat her house with a wood stove, but she goes camping a lot. And she likes to have these fire starters for camping. They're great. See like this is a little spot here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that off. It's not moldy or anything, but it's not pristine. So I only wanna eat what's pristine. My favorite way to cook spaghetti squash is in a roaster pan in the oven. It helps dry the spaghetti squash out. If you cook spaghetti squash in an Instapot, it cooks fast, but it doesn't let the moisture evaporate from the spaghetti squash, and it gets really watery, and then it waters down your sauce. And if you went to a lot of effort to make 
a yummy tasting sauce to go over your spaghetti squash, then you don't want it watered down. I'm gonna cook these in the oven for about an hour to an hour and a half until they are fully cooked through and nice and dry. My mom gave me one of those thermometers that you can put into your oven so you can check the temperature, the actual temperature of your oven. And like I suspected, my oven runs about 50 degrees cooler on the top than it should according to the temperature on the gauge. So I think you can recalibrate your oven. So I'm gonna have to do some research on that. So I have to run to the post office and then I'm gonna let this cook. I'm honestly not worried about leaving this cooking in the oven for you know 30 minutes while I'm gone. And then when we get back, we will put in the meatballs and I'll show you what those look like. I got home from the post office and now I'm in the middle of a huge garlic processing project. I'm finally processing all the garlic that I grew in 2021. So uh, that's a lot of work. So what I have here is I have the meatballs and I'm glad I have a freezer meal ready so that I don't have to worry about cooking dinner. Our spaghetti squash is done. I went ahead and turned the oven off and I'm gonna let the spaghetti squash stay nice and warm. We're gonna cook these meatballs at 400 degrees for probably 30, 35 minutes. I ran out of cheese when I was making these meatballs. So when they're about 10 minutes away from being done, I'll shred a little bit of cheese up and top them with some cheese. I just changed into some comfy clothes and Josh just got home. I am gonna go ahead and top the meatballs with some cheese. Oh. Well, it is now eight o'clock and these have been in the oven for probably 45 minutes and the oven was not on this whole time. Yay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that lower oven on and I've been baking my zucchinis and I've been baking my spaghetti squash this whole time. So let's take a look at that and see if the spaghetti squash is burnt. It's not too bad. I was wondering why it was smelling like pumpkin this whole time. I was whoo, peeling all this garlic behind me and that's why. So dinner is gonna be a little bit later today. It's already 7.52 and I don't have any leftovers so we don't have food. And at this point if we were to go get takeout, it would be done at the same time so it's not really worth it. So I'm gonna get this shredded up. I was gonna mention I had some provolone cheese that was in my fridge that needs to be eaten up. So instead of shredding cheese, I'm just gonna use this to top our meatballs when it's time to put cheese on our meatballs. Well, my spaghetti squash is definitely nice and dry and not gonna to be too liquidy after being in the oven for almost two and a half hours. I kept the fire going this whole time today, Josh. Josh is bringing in firewood from outside, so you probably can hear him doing that. And I have not seasoned this spaghetti squash at all yet, so I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoned salt and some butter on it, just so that it has a little bit of flavor. This has onions, paprika, salt, pepper, onion powder, all the things. So if you want this recipe, it will be linked down below. I always make a big, big thing of it, and then I don't have to make it very often. I have a video on that too if you want to watch the video and I kind of talk about why I make my own seasoned salt. Just give that a light stir. I'm trying not to break up those strings too much, just trying to fluff it and then that's done. It's definitely going to get cold before it's time for dinner so we'll probably just pop it in the microwave before we eat. Alright, it's now 9.02 and this is perfectly done, smells so good. It would be really good over pasta, <laughs> but we're having spaghetti squash tonight and that's just okay. It's more than okay, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, might be okay for Josh, but it'll be really delicious. So I'm gonna call Josh down and we're gonna have some meatballs and spaghetti squash and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey friends. I got some different things out of the freezer that we're gonna be cooking up for the rest of the week. Here are just some eggs that I'm going to be making into some deviled eggs. That just sounded really good to me, so I thought I'd get them out and hard boil them in my Instapot. I got out some pork shoulder. So my husband just got home, so you might hear my dogs barking because they like to greet him as soon as he gets home. 
I got some pork shoulder out because we're going to be making tomorrow the homemade tortillas and I'm going to do a kind of a, I think I have some canned pineapple so I want to braise the pork shoulder. I also got out some baby back ribs and we're going to attempt to make some ribs. I haven't only made ribs one other time before and so I don't, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve eggs in there. Hey Josh. Oh yeah, those came in my P.O. box. Aren't they nice? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. People are so nice. But what I'm going to do tonight for dinner is I did find some hot dog buns in one of my freezers. So we are going to have some bratwurst tonight with, I think I'm going to cook up some onions because we have bratwurst from the whole hog that I bought that are phenomenal. And that just sounds like a really easy dinner tonight because I am processing all that garlic that I peeled today. I probably spent three hours peeling garlic today. Josh, can you smell the house? Oh, he went upstairs. But I left for a little bit and came back and I was like, whoa, it smells like garlic in here. So I wanted a really simple dinner. We're still processing or preserving up the garlic right now. So I wanted something easy for dinner. So that's why we're gonna have broth first. All right, this is cooking. Our eggs are done. I didn't realize that these eggs, I they're fresh eggs. They were only a day or two old and they are not the best eggs to hard boil. And so some of them cracked but that's okay, I'll peel them tomorrow and we'll make the deviled eggs tomorrow. But now I wanna get the peppers and onions sauteing. This Dutch oven, I just confit a bunch of garlic, five cups of garlic we just confit in here. So we're just gonna use this pan because it's got garlic oil goodness. I'm gonna add a little bit more of our garlic infused oil in here. I cut up an onion and then here are some peppers from the garden from last year. These are diced. I have sliced peppers in my freezer, but I didn't feel like digging around to get them. I know where they are, but I just didn't feel like it. So we're gonna have diced peppers with our brats tonight, which is fine. So we're gonna get these nice and caramely and delicious. And then we're gonna get our brats going right next to it. I put a little bit of just plain avocado oil in this cast iron. And we're going to get our four broths in here. And I'm going to put the lid on this so that they cook through evenly before we brown them. I decided while I'm waiting for the broths to cook, might as well not waste this time and go ahead and get these peeled. They're peeling pretty easily. Even for being only two day old eggs, so that's pretty good. container here with just a cloth paper towel and I'm going to put them in there just to get any of the extra moisture off before I have time to make them into deviled eggs. The shells sink to the bottom so I can use just this water to brush off any partial shells. I have two egg customers now. During the winter, I didn't even have enough eggs to supply my mom with eggs. She gets free eggs because she helps me so much. There's a bug crawling on my ceiling. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call Josh down to get that. But because they didn't lay as much, I didn't even have enough. I had plenty of eggs for Josh and I to keep us in eggs, but I didn't have enough eggs to give to my mom and I didn't have enough eggs to sell. But my girls are in full production again. And now I was just having one customer but at this point now, I, I just gained another customer today. So now I have two people that I sell eggs to. And I wouldn't say I make money off of it. Uh, I wouldn't personally go into egg sales to, to make money, but it does offset their feed bill a little bit. And now, especially because I am feeding them that organic feed that I buy through Azure, I can link it down in the description. And so by having two customers, I offset my bill a little bit. So that's pretty great so I'm I'm really glad and I'm really enjoying that and it's kind of a win-win because they get really awesome eggs I used to buy eggs from a co-worker who had her own chickens and I absolutely loved it and now that I have my own eggs it's kind of fun to have that go full circle and and I can sell my eggs to some old co-workers and it's just my favorite thing I I really love it and this is dinner I have a couple uh, these are not the freshest rolls, but we will eat them 
for dinner tonight. Probably two. We'll probably eat these two because they're still okay. These two I'll probably just turn into breadcrumbs because they are a little bit kind of stale. So tomorrow I will see you back when we attempt to make homemade tortillas and we're gonna make a braised pulled pork. It's gonna be good. I don't know exactly what recipe I'm gonna follow yet. My, I have some chipotle and honey and some oranges. I still have oranges in the refrigerator that are from two months ago and they still look great. So we'll probably put some of those in with the pork and it's just gonna be a delicious dinner hopefully tomorrow. So I'll see you back tomorrow when we do that. It's early in the next day and I wanted to get the meat going for dinner tonight. I just added a can of salsa verde and I just chopped up a tomatillo. That tomatillo has been in my refrigerator since probably August. I don't know how I missed it. It was underneath my carrots and it was still completely fresh. So I'm gonna do some experimenting with keeping tomatillos in my refrigerator next year, or this year I should say, so we'll see how that goes. I added some chipotle peppers and now I'm gonna cook it in my Instant Pot for 70 minutes and I'm gonna let it sit until I'm ready to deal with it later this night. I've been out of my carbonated water for probably three weeks now and my mother-in-law paid me in carbonated water to do some freeze dry projects for her. I would have totally shared my freeze dryer and done it without the payment of carbonated water, but I do love my carbonated water, so I was happy to take it. We are going to freeze dry up her kale from her garden last year and she wants to make green powder. Here are some carrots that were in my refrigerator. They are definitely needed to be eaten up. These I harvested back in July. They're the littlest ones that are left. And unfortunately, I ran over my food processor. So I get to shred all these itty bitty little carrots by hand. I do give them a really, really good scrub. I do not peel these carrots. They're homegrown carrots. And I, if I peeled them, they're so small, there would be nothing left of them. I'm fermenting some honey garlic over here and I had a spill accident so I'm going to mix in a little bit of this honey that spilled into here and but first we have to see if this meat is tender oh yeah very tender so I'm gonna take this meat out of here and we're gonna pour our sauce in the fat separator because there's quite a bit of grease on top of this this is pasture raised pork and so it's not lean like you would get at a grocery store that orange smells so good. I can smell the orange and the chipotle. I still have four more oranges in the fridge and they look like they need to be used up. So I'm gonna have to find other ways to use up those oranges before they go bad. So you can see how the grease has come up to the top. I'm gonna use my fat separator to pour that back into the Instapot. I wanna thicken this sauce up a little bit. So I'm gonna put it in the Instapot on saute mode and we're gonna leave that grease behind just to thicken it because that's got really good flavor. But I don't want my tacos to be too watery. I wanna get the carrot salad slash salsa thing made up right now so that it has time to marinate. When you make these types of salads with carrots, it's better if they sit in the dressing for a little bit of time. I'm gonna make my dressing out of the leftover vinegar from these quick pickled onions. There's a little bit of onions left in there. That is red wine vinegar and red onions. I'm gonna add olive oil to that. And this is some infused garlic olive oil that I just made. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of that. So that's gonna add the garlic flavor without having to add any garlic. Super happy about this project. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit of honey in there too. So I'm gonna shake that up. I would love to put my fermented garlic honey in this, but it's not ready yet. I'm thinking I'm really gonna like that project. I don't know if I've told you that, but I have that project. Oh yeah, I did, because I said I spilled honey all over. Okay, a little bit of honey in there. Carrots are pretty sweet, but I wanna add a little bit of sweetness to cut all that vinegar. I'm pouring those red onions in there as well, because that'll just add some really yummy oniony goodness to the salad. I'm gonna mix this together and we're gonna let this marinate. It'll probably be about, I don't know, marinating for probably an hour by the time I get all of dinner put together. That is not me working for an hour, that is just by the time Josh gets home and I make the tortillas and everything. Okay, 
I should give this a taste test now with the carrots and see if it needs any seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. Now, if I was not in pantry challenge, I would put a whole bunch of cilantro in here. I'd probably put a little bit of fresh mint, parsley, a ton of herbs. I think carrot salads can just handle a ton of herbs, but I don't have that right now. So this is what we're having and it's phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, that is so good. And you can see how this sauce has thickened up a little bit. Now it's turning more into a glaze. I don't want to continue to mix this because I want the meat to stay a little bit together, but that's what we want. We kind of want that sauce to reduce down. And then I'm going to add these peppers and onions from last night's dinner because I don't have any use for those. And peppers and onions go really well with tacos, so we'll just add those in there and that will bulk that up a little bit. Hmm. That's good but it's a little bit bitter. Let me taste that again with a spoon. Hey Josh. Okay, let's give it a try again. I wonder if it's the orange peel. It needs a couple things, so I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna add a bunch of stuff to this. We're gonna add some of our home dehydrated, excuse me, freeze dried garlic. I just finished this project today. Oh, that smells good. There. Some freeze dried onion tops. Coriander. And some paprika. Whoop! Or a lot of paprika. Is it good? I think it is the rind. Can you taste the orange? It's a little bit. If you didn't say what it was though, it'd just be like a, mm. like a. It tastes better like than it did. It's just a, like a kind of random bitterness in the back of my tongue, but it's not bad. It's good. I like it, actually. Oh, good. Upon further review. Upon further review. All right. Let's let this sit and simmer. And I think once we have the carrot salad and the corn and everything on, it's gonna taste really, really good. I'm probably just being too hard on myself. I thought I was being so clever adding those oranges. Here we go. Josh just set up my tortilla press because it came in a couple different pieces and so he got that put together for me. And you can see I bought this masa flour a while ago and it's not been used at all. So we're gonna do this today. I'll link the recipe that I'm using down in the description box, but it's pretty simple. It smells so good. This masa flour smells so good. Um, this is a half cup measure and I'm gonna put three cups of masa flour in here. Salt, whoop. And hot, hot water. So I microwave this water and it's about equal parts, a little less water, depending, it said, on the consistency of the dough. That's very hot. So I'm just going to start putting, let's start with half the water. Mix that up and see how it goes. And it said if it looks too wet, add more flour. If it looks too dry, add more water. It wasn't really super, didn't sound super picky on the water flour ratio or masa ratio. And I think this is the texture we want. So I'm just gonna need this a few more times and then we're supposed to cover it and let it sit for 10 minutes. I think this is where experience of making tortillas comes into play, knowing the exact consistency you want. My absolute dream would be to grow my own corn and dry the corn, grind the corn, and make homemade tortillas. That is my ultimate goal to someday have. 
and then maybe have homegrown pinto beans or black beans as a side. Probably can't grow rice around here, but wouldn't that be cool? That's my dream. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a cover and we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes. Here we go. This is the reason why I haven't done this yet is because I didn't want to invest in one of these or didn't invest. They're not very expensive. I can link the one I got on Amazon. It has really good reviews and it was super, super affordable. So I cut a piece of parchment paper that big and it says to use a two tablespoon scoop. So that's what I have here. And here we go. All right, friends, it's the first time I'm ever doing this. Now we have to bake it and taste it and see if it's good, but I feel like this is a win right here. I'm gonna get a cookie sheet out and I'm gonna start laying them out. I think I'm gonna, I don't know, should I press them all? Yeah, I'm gonna push, press them all. I'll put a towel over them so they don't dry out and we'll just keep rolling them out. I think I'm gonna do a little bit bigger because that is a really small tortilla. I think right here is the moment of truth, whether these tortillas stick together or not. I have my oven preheated to 200 degrees with a towel in there, so when these are done, we put them in the oven to stay warm, I think. I want to make sure I cook them all the way through. That's the biggest thing. Can you see how it's steaming right there? And it's puffed up a little bit. I think that's a sign that it's starting to cook on the inside. I think this is done. That's hot, that's really hot. Put that in there. I think I can cook more than one at a time. Which is good, because I have a lot to cook here. First tortilla, I want to go ahead and give it a taste test to see if it's any good. Make sure it's even cooked all the way through so that I know how to cook the rest of them. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is not like any store-bought corn tortilla you've ever had. The flavor, the corn flavor. I cannot wait to make these into chips. I'm gonna attempt to make Doritos at some point. Maybe Cool Ranch chips, because I do make up my own ranch powder. Oh my gosh, no. It kind of flips apart like a pita almost and I think it could be cooked a little bit more all the way through and I think in the future I probably could roll them a little bit thinner but I've already rolled them all out I probably should have done a taste test before so I turned my cast iron down I think I had turned it back up. Uh oh, yep, we got a little dark there. I turned it down 
so that it could cook all the way through. Oh my gosh, you guys. Friends. So good. I do need a little bit of work to perfect it, but these are way easier than corn tortillas. I mean, flour tortillas. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I called Josh down and I said that dinner is ready. So he will be down in just a minute so that he can give everything a taste test for you. And so you can see kind of how the whole dinner comes together. He's gonna give this meat a taste test after I kind of doctored it up a little bit. And I put the corn in here, added some more spices and seasonings. So if you like it, I probably won't ever be able to recreate it, but it's hot. It's really hot. That's really good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Is it better? Mm-hmm. Good. Let me show you what I'm taking out of the oven. I think you'll be excited about okay. this. Ooh. Okay, those are awesome. Can I just take one? <laughs> yeah, take one. We'll take one from the bottom because they, they're going to be softer. Okay. Because they've been sitting oh. in the oven steaming. It smells like a real tortilla. Yeah. Mm. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. With stuff on it, I bet it'll be even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A carrot salsa with mm. pickled onions in it. Wow. We have cheddar cheese. Homemade sour cream, homemade hot sauce, and our pork. It's got good pliability as well. See, that's why I wanted you to... Because I don't know if this is in frame, but... It is. Classic corn tortilla <laughs> just cracks right down the middle. <laughs> so that's why I had him taste one of the ones on the bottom, because what I noticed was when they first come out of the cast iron, they're very... Well, this one's even soft, but they're very, very stiff when they first come out. And by having them in the oven, the farther down they are, the steam kind of keeps them really soft so that they're pliable. So we're going to eat some dinner and maybe go watch a show or something. And I will see you next time I'm in the kitchen. Friends, it is Sunday evening and I am wrapping up this vlog. Yesterday was Saturday and we had a beautiful day hanging out with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. We did a baby shower for her and I cooked all that food for her and it was wonderful. And then we went to my parents' house for dinner. My mom made a pot roast. It was phenomenal with potatoes and carrots and it was a beautiful dinner. It was the first time all my nieces and nephews have all been together. The first time my parents have seen all my nieces and nephews together since the start of 2020 craziness. And it was a very beautiful, very special dinner. And it was just amazing to see the joy on my parents' faces to have all their grandkids in the same room. And since the start of the craziness, I have two new nieces. So it was a beautiful thing. I want to say thank you for hanging out with me as we did this week seven of Pantry Challenge. I am about to make dinner tonight. We're gonna to start week eight. We are making taco pizza, which I haven't had in probably three years. This used to be a staple growing up in my family's household. And my mom was talking about it yesterday at dinner and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to make taco pizza. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna make a potato casserole for Josh and I for breakfast. And we are going to enjoy week eight. I have not done any grocery shopping for personal use since the start of this pantry challenge back in January, January 1st. And so I want to say thank you for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll put some more videos right here. You can go enjoy those and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.